This is the art of engineering. And guess where I am? I don't think you'll ever guess. It's beautiful New Zealand. Now, this is my VK2 AOE CW filter. And look, I know it's chunky as. I wanted it to be a little bit retro. This is a, a cash box that I got from the Crazy Bargain store for about $12. Let's have a listen to it. Now, this is just the speaker without the actual filter engaged. We have a volume control up here as well. And I'm going to now switch in the narrowband audio filter that's using three LM741s. And that's on narrow. And let's go back to wide. Back to narrow. And this is the rig CW filter that's in it. Well, in the CW mode. So that's how the rig sounds in CW. That's my narrowband filter. And that's through using the speaker in the actual unit that I built. I like to think that that's a lot easier to listen to. What do you think? filter for CW. Now a lot of my rigs are homebrew or kit built and the filters are okay but quite often they're not narrow enough and of course I'm about to build a rock mic transceiver and that's certainly going to have some issues with uh, selectivity and CW filtering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build myself a narrow band audio filter. I'm using op operational amplifiers and operational amplifier circuits so I'm going to talk about how I designed that circuit. Rather than make life difficult for myself, I thought, why not try this kit from JCAR Electronics? It's an audio amplifier. It looks like it's all through hull components. It's very easy to build. So we'll have a look and see how that performs too, because if I'm building simple receivers and transceivers, it's always nice to have an easy way to get the audio stage to happen. So this might be a nice find. And I'll put the price just here, so you can see how much uh, I paid for that at, at JCAR. And the whole thing is going to go into a box. And this box here I got for about 12 bucks from the Crazy Bugger store. I was going to put a transceiver in it. It seems like a little, little bit of a waste in its own way. But the reason why the box is so big for what is really quite a small circuit is because, just a moment, I'm going to be using this speaker. And I got this speaker out of a stereo system. I just want to hear what that sounds like as well. So that will be in the box. Um, the box will have holes drilled in it and we'll have a volume control on it, and all our inputs and outputs and whatnot. So I'm gonna head off to, to JCAR now uh, with a shopping list, and we're gonna get the parts we need. Now, I could order these parts online, but I'm lazy, and I'm also in a hurry. Well, 40 bucks later, uh, and that's including prices for cables and whatnot, accessory cables for joining things up. Uh, probably could make those cables up myself and save a little bit of money, but accessory cables like $5.95. By the time I bought the connectors, it wasn't going to be that much cheaper. If I did it online, most definitely cheaper. Now just a quick word about the narrowband audio filter that I've designed. It's an op-amp filter, a bandpass filter, 
and I had a little bit of experience working with these types of filters. I've been studying engineering for the last two years in the electronics subject that I studied. We actually did low pass, high pass, band pass. We did a lot of stuff with operational amplifiers. I've got to admit, the labs were quite stressful. I didn't prepare properly, as always. Didn't study enough, was working too much, and excuses, excuses, excuses. Did get through the subject, did quite well in the labs, and I was constantly surrounded by the, the sound of exploding capacitors and uh, the smell of burning electronics because uh, the kids run circles around me when it comes to the mathematics and the, the mental gymnastics that's required to be an engineer. But the practicalities of building circuits, I did have a little bit of an advantage in that area because uh, these guys have been locked down in COVID for the last God knows how many weeks. This was the first practical subject they had done. And uh, there was a lot of uh, tears and frustration when it came to the uh, breadboarding and prototyping and whatnot. Now, I'm not a big fan of breadboards uh, so, and proto prototyping boards, especially for complex circuits, because quite often wires do not end up in the right place and things do not work out the way you'd like them to. They're okay it's for certain types of circuits and for simple circuits. I decided to go straight to prototyping VeroBoard and I was still very worried because I laid the thing out terrible. It was a terrible mess, but we did have success. Now, during my time at UTS, we were using a program called Multisim. And uh, I designed a, a circuit on Multisim and I got a, a graph for it and everything else. But when I went onto the Texas Instrument site, I was pleased to find that they have their own design uh, software for operational amplifiers and you can put in the type of operational amplifier you're gonna use, and I was using just a really basic LM741, and I know that's not the best operational amp I could probably have used, but I used what I knew. And I had a few lying around as well, so that made things easier as well. Um, I'll show you the program and what it does, and uh, we'll go from there. And this is the Texas Instruments design tool. And as you can see, you can select the filter that you want to uh, design, be it low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop, all pass. And I did a um, band pass filter. And I'll show you my designs. We'll jump up here to the design. This is the design that I ended up with. And it, uh, it's quite simple. It's got three integrated circuits in it, or three operational amplifiers. that are uh, DIP packages, 8-pin. And it does all the values for you. And this all happens when you put in the, the parameters for the particular circuit. If you go up to my designs, uh, this is the type of filter that I ended up designing. It's a band pass filter, sixth order bezel. And it had a center frequency of 700 hertz and a width of 300 hertz. And that is our response. Here we've got a 700 kilohertz center frequency and it rolls off very nicely. It's school holidays and I'm a very happy man because tomorrow's staff lunch and then uh, well, we're already free and clear. So we are hitting the test bench and trying to finish off projects that have been sitting forever. And one of those projects of course is, like I said at the beginning of the video, our audio filter for CW. And as per usual, the test bench is a diabolical mess. This is our filter with the uh, operational amplifiers. What we're going to do is, I'm going to test, because I've done this on VeroBoard. I really don't like VeroBoard. I seem to find ugly board building is a lot easier to see where things are going. So what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to have a really good look at the circuit, meter it out and make sure that... Uh, that we haven't made any silly wiring mistakes. Um, that's got a split rail on it, so it takes our 12 volts in and makes six volts positive, six volts negative. I have bought the components I need. Um, there's a three pin nine volt regulator in there and a couple of electrolytic capacitors to give me the nine volts, which I'm gonna need for this uh, one watt, maximum two watt peak audio amplifier. Pre-bought, uh, the kit was very cheap. It's Maybe cheap and nasty. I'm going to find out. So I thought it'd be nice to know if this thing works all right. It might be a nice audio amplifier module to use in future uh, muck around receivers that I do. I like to build simple because I'm a bit dumb. I'm very dumb, in fact. Uh, 
we'll be building this lovely uh, amplifier. We'll get uh, working on construction of this. Get this built up. You don't need to watch that. There's clear instructions on how to do that in, in the kit here. We'll get it going on the bench and just make sure that that stage is working because that will just mean then that if I, once I know the audio amplifier is working, if there's any problems, I'll know it's in this filter circuit. And you know, how hard can it be to, to work out what's going wrong in this? And you know, worst case scenario, if I get the Tom Tits with it and I can't stand the variable board construction, I'll, I'll rip everything off this and I'll build it ugly style like I'm used to. Me again. So we have followed our plans Look, you wouldn't even probably need the plans. That is all the through hole components on the board. One I see, a uh, few capacitors, a couple of resistors and a diode, and Bob is your uncle. It doesn't come with the logarithmic pot that you need for the volume control, and obviously it doesn't come with a speaker as well, so I'm going to team this up with our uh, nine volt three pin supply which will give us the correct voltage. Another annoying thing is that it says if it's going to be used at 0.5 watts or above, you're supposed to have a heat sink on the, a U-shaped heat sink on the damn IC. So um, that's another thing that I'm going to have to play around with as well when the time comes. For the moment, um, we are going to leave it as is and just do a quick test once we get the speaker and power supply and whatnot hooked up to this and just see whether it actually works and what sort of volume we get out of it. Okay, it's only time to go to bed. We have our 9 volt regulator here. Uh, we're coming out of our filtered switch mode supply. That's our speaker. That's our little amplifier module. I've got a line in and out um, on this pot here, 100k log pot. That's our uh, <laughs> rigging for uh, getting audio out of our trusty, well less than trusty TS520. I've had to replace things in it three times, but it's going at the moment. I actually had a DX QSO to uh, on 20 meters yesterday to Hungary and also to Venice, Italy. So it was SSB and about 50 watts sideband. I wasn't uh, too keen on going any higher than that. So let's switch this on and see if we lose some smoke. Okay, so that's our nine volt regulator. Not much happening on the bands, but as you can hear, um, pot works. It's very loud. So this part of our filter circuit seems to be all working and I'm very happy about that. So it's time to go to bed and uh, tomorrow we'll uh, check our filter circuit, make sure it's wired correctly and see if that's actually working as a uh, narrow band CW filter. Well, this is our test setup. Uh, we've got our filtered supply. That's our speaker here, the uh, amplifier module that I talked about earlier in the video, which we know is working, we've, we've tested that already, uh, along with our 9 volt regulator, which is powering the uh, audio amplifier. But now we've incorporated our filter, and the filter has a split rail, so it has a 12 volts applied to it, plus and minus 6 volts approximately. And this is the part of the circuit that I'm most concerned about. Um, the variable construction, very messy, I haven't laid it out very cleverly and I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to work. So uh, we'll, we'll fire it up and we'll see how it goes. This is 40 meters um, CW with the filter. And this is without the filter. So I would say I'm pretty happy with that. And here's another progress report. We have uh, Put our little power led in. This will be our bypass switch and uh, that will be uh, the jack out or headphones in. So um, I've drilled the back um, to put the power jack in. Unfortunately I couldn't get one that wasn't um, circuit board mount so um, I'm going to do my best to uh, resin or super glue that to the back of the box and I, I know I'm going to regret it. Probably have to go and get a proper fitting but uh, We'll see how we go. I like to use what I've got. And we've uh, drilled the top as well for the uh, pot. And we'll very shortly be uh, wiring this into the box and uh, labeling it and doing all that fun stuff. I know what you might be thinking, that uh, all these leads are too long. And you're probably right. And uh, 
If it wasn't, if it was an RF circuit, I'd probably be spending a bit more time trying to make it uh, a little bit neater. But uh, when I've got it all in the box, I may spend a bit of time shortening leads. But we all know that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah, just want to get in the box. Um, like I was saying, this um, power connect, unfortunately, uh, they didn't have the type I wanted. So I'm going to try and glue that in position, but I'll probably put the plug in first so that uh, we know it actually gets in there and then we'll we'll, uh, we'll glue it in position and hopefully uh, that'll work for us. Anyway, we're getting close. And this is a little tour of the insides of the filter. We've got our volume control on top, uh, a, a little power LED. This will be for a headphone or audio out. Um, this is a filter in and out on the, uh, the little switch here. And because it's an old, um, it's not an old, it's a new cash box that I bought for 12 bucks from the Crazy Bargain Store. It's got a key that opens it up. And uh, we've got our speaker that I rescued from a, uh, an old stereo uh, speaker. And over here, we have the J-Car amplifier module. And um, in here, 9 volt 3 pin regulator to run that amplifier. Now the bandpass filter is over here. It's got a three LM741 operation amplifier. And um, we've got on the back here, our 12 volts in and our audio in. So that is the filter. You can see there's a lot of space in this case, obviously. Um, but if I ever decide I wanna play around with this filter, add some more variation to it or change it completely, uh, there is room to do that. And, you know, the case is large because of the size of the speaker as well. But um, I'm really happy with the quality of the sound and I'm really happy with the end result. Um, I've got something now that I can uh, plug into my uh, um, more basic uh, QRP rigs. And this is the uh, speaker now that I've got inside this filter. But that's without the actual bandpass filter in place. It's just straight to the speaker. And that's my narrowband filter. Filters on. Filters off. Magic. My wife, she'd die. High five. Um. <laughs> wow, you're still here. And I'm still in New Zealand. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you've got any questions about that filter or you'd like to maybe see the circuit in another video, please comment below. 73s, and I'll see you in the next instalment of The Art of Engineering.